future of our planet. We are running out of water. The glaciers are melting. What happens when we run out of water? Will mankind and life go extinct on Earth? We are not running out of water. Million years ago, how much water was there on this planet? Still the same amount of water is here. Only if some men go off to Mars, they will take some water and go. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, the same amount of water is here. It's not gone anywhere. It's not where you want it. That is something that you need to look at. Why is it? Why is water going away from human habitations? Why is it lodging itself somewhere else? Obviously, we are not living the way we should live. Very simple. Hello? We always went in pursuit of water. Where there was a river, civilizations developed. But now water is trying to move away from us. We must be doing something fundamentally wrong. Hello? Isn't it? We are doing something very fundamentally wrong in the way we are organizing human habitations. We need to look at this seriously now, very important. Otherwise, you have to go and live under the ocean because that's the only place there will be water <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I stay on water and this one comes from Sasang Pai, a cognizant. I came to know the Isha Foundation through Rally for Rivers. Uh, please could you enlighten us on the possibility and progress and how we can contribute? Oh. Uh, I think they showed something on the video mm -hmm. for, about Rally for Rivers. We made a seven and sixty page policy recommendation as to how Indian rivers should be managed. Because on an average, all Indian rivers on an average have depleted about forty percent in the last seventy years. Some rivers have receded over sixty to seventy percent, major rivers. We must understand this, the European rivers are of a different nature and Indian rivers are of a completely different nature. Here largely the precipitation comes in the form of rain and also snow. And glacial water is probably the main source, I believe about fifty-five to sixty percent of European water, uh, rivers are coming from glacial waters. In India only four percent of river water is glacial, rest of it is forest fed. River is not the source of water in a tropical land. River, river is a destination into which the water comes. The only source of water we have is monsoon. And this monsoon pours down in forty-five to fifty days in a year. What comes down in fifty days, all in the form of water, not in the form of snow, because snow will pile up and stay for two months and slowly melt and trickle into the land. That is not how monsoons come. Monsoons come like a torrent of water, all liquid. So how do we hold it? We were holding it because there was substantial vegetation everywhere. So vegetation and the richness of the soil held it and slowly let it go in the form of streams and rivulets which all joined together and became a river. But we have removed green cover in such a way, if you have flown over India, if you fly from Delhi to Chennai or Bangalore, if every five minutes you look down, it looks like one brown desert except for the western guards and a few patches here and there, rest is all farmed totally. Because there is no vegetation and there is no richness in the soil, we are not able to hold the water. When the rains come, there is flood, otherwise there is drought. At the same time, at the, at the upper regions of the river, there is flood, the lower regions of the river, there is drought in the, at the same time, at a given time. This phenomena is happening mainly because of removal of vegetation. To what extent? Means you must understand this. For example, Ganga Basin, where it accounts for twenty-five percent of India's geography, thirty-three percent of India's agriculture, we have removed ninety-two percent of green cover in the last sixty years. What's the plan? So Rally for Rivers mainly is pushing towards putting back at least one-third of the green cover back on the Indian subcontinent. So right now, as a sample of that, we are doing one short river which is fifty-four kilometers, which unfortunately became notorious as uh, the suicide capital of India 
which is called as Evathmal in uh, Maharashtra, where maximum number of suicides happen. Almost every third family we meet has had a suicide in their families. So, we have taken this up hands-on project, where recently the cabinet approvals have happened and we are working on the ground. Our volunteers are meeting every family, 9,600 families in the Yavatmal region are being contacted and given a cell phone number in case of any distress, they can get back to us. The fundamental is to change them from regular farming where there is no scale. They're just scratching land which is two acres, three acres per family. They cannot invest enough in a two acre land. If they invest, they become debt ridden and r drives them towards suicide. So we are seeing how to make them an integrated way of approach and also towards agroforestry, which will revive the river. A larger project that's coming up, which all of you can participate in whatever way you can because we need a big push for this, is called Kaveri Calling. Kaveri is a river which flows mainly between two southern states, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. These two states have been at war with each other as to who should drink more Kaveri water. See, if there were two glasses of water for both of us, we will drink our water and be nice to each other. Suppose there's only one glass of water between the two of us, we're nice people but we'll fight. Yes or no? Probably. But yes, I'm it... sure you won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, if there's no water, I will also fight. <laughs> I'm saying people will fight, isn't it? Because of scarcity, people will fight, even nice people will unnecessarily thrash with each other. This is what has been happening. Here we have removed eighty-seven percent of the green cover. Kaveri is very dear to me because I grew up around this river. Mm. Once I floated down this river for thirteen days on just four truck tubes and a few bamboos. Mm. I lived off the river. In my experience, I never saw this river and fantastic forest that was around as natural resource. I always experience this as a life larger than myself. It's a much bigger life than you and me. And it has been there before you and me and it should be there be after you and me. But right now we brought it to a place where it may not be there. What's been there for a million years may not be there for the next generation. We are bringing it to that place. Right now the scientific studies show Kaveri has depleted forty-six percent, but I don't agree with this because they are taking the monsoon flow also as the volume of water. If you leave the monsoon flow, if you just go and see the river after October, in my eyes, it seems like it's twenty-five to thirty percent of what it was when I was a child mm. around that place. So it's depleted so sharply, it's been uh, troubling me. So now mm. we are doing this. This is a... this is a rally of a different kind. The rally for rivers was purely an awareness because river is a concurrent subject in India between the central government and the state government. We wanted to bring that concurrence which we managed for the first time. These sixteen states at that time were ruled by six different political parties. For the first time, they came together on one cause. Otherwise, opposition parties have always been, you know, whatever one says, the other will say just the reverse of it. This is how it's been. But they came together and spoke in one voice, which itself was a tremendous thing. Mm -hmm. It showed the maturity mm -hmm. that there is, in spite of the daily fighting that happens, when real issues come, they stood up and stood up for one cause that was fantastic. Hundred and sixty-two million people supported this cause in thirty days' time. I personally drove nine thousand three hundred kilometers, one hundred and forty-two events. Literally, we were on the road thirty days, non-stop driving and talking ourselves hoarse. But this did the job. Now, the Rally for Rivers recommendation became the official recommendation for the twenty-nine states that the government sent this as an offi official recommendation. Three to four states are very proactive. They're going and doing their own thing, which is very good. Another six states, we've signed MOUs. But now, we need a large-scale demonstration. See, the important aspect of this is, we are shifting farmers from three-month, four-month crop pattern to agroforestry, which will multiply the farmer's income. Right now, we have transformed 69,760 farmers into agroforestry, and their incomes have multiplied five to eight times in a matter of ten years' time. 
So this multiplication of income will happen. Why I'm saying this is, this is an economic plan with a significant ecological impact. Mm -hmm. That is what is important because the moment you talk ecology, all the businesses become cautious because these guys are going to come and bash us. All ecologists or ecological activists always trying to hit some industry or some business. So this is what I want to change and this is what we have successfully changed is economy and ecology have to go hand in hand. If you put… pit one against the other <laughs> if you pit one against the other, economy will win hands down, ecology will be battered. So that is what has been happening, especially now in India, because we are looking for an economic surge. We are talking about becoming a five trillion dollar economy. When we go like this, there is a possibility ecology could be trampled. So we are working with the governments because it's very, very important. This is something always, at least in India, the people who represent ecological uh, concerns have never worked with the governments, always mm. against the government. Mm. If you're serious about doing something, you have to work with the government. There's simply no other way. Well, there may be compromises because they have their own concerns, they have their own political and budgetary issues and various other dimensions are there, not just some ideal that we hold. So this is a new trend that we have created that ecological concerns are not of… people have always treated like this. Economy is today's concern, ecology is tomorrow's concern. I'm saying ecology and economy are today's concern and they have to go hand in hand. So if you want to support in some way, Kaveri Calling will start in September. Just to tell you how it is being done, we are… Uh, this time we are on a motorcycle. A group of us are riding down 1500 kilometers, nearly 1500 kilometers down the river, camping on the river, creating about 35 events along the way. We are asking for the governments to give an incentive for farmers to shift from regular farming which destroys river and uh, uh, terrain into agroforestry. This is yet to happen, both the governments are examining the budgetary proposals that we have given. Whether it comes through or not, if it comes through, we will go propagating the benefits the government is offering, the incentives. If it doesn't, we use it as a people's movement to push the government towards that policy. But this has to be done now. What I see is, if we don't do this in the next twelve to fifteen years' time, I think uh, particularly southern region, uh, right now it is the most water distressed region is uh, Tamil Nadu and it's also entering Karnataka in a big way. I think uh, it, it's a clear manifestation, we don't care a damn about our children and their children, how they live here. It's a very clear statement as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to leave that statement. Mm. Thank you.